not seem strange to you that uh, after 12 really interesting holes from the surface, all of a sudden, boom, uh, a company is going underground, driving an at it through the side of a mountain, and yeah. and not knowing at that point the geometry of the system, but drilling nonetheless from underground, isn't that kind of like throwing a, a dart at the wall? Well, it's, um, I, I, I would hope that they optimized their, um, their at it as best they could from their knowledge of the surface drilling and at least tried to follow a degree of that, but it still leaves an enormous space and uh, the, the conductive target uh, that, that's been established is, is outside of the footprint of that, um, of that um, underground and, uh, and surface drilling. So, you know, I mean, it was probably a situation where um, um, a company basically wanted to jump ahead and uh, try and turn something into, uh, into a mine operation as fast as possible, uh, prove something up, and um, they, they went in with a, a rather aggressive um, approach at, um, at drilling. Um, it may have also been related to the um, to the challenges of drilling from surface in an area with high high elevation, where it's not always de de easy to actually operate unless you have helicopter support. So the, there are probably a whole pile of reasons why Sumitomo took the took the tack that they did, but the fact they didn't uh, they didn't in uncover something that really um, really took them to where they needed to be shouldn't be a reason to um, to discount the opportunity here. There's still enormous. Uh, enormous potential associated with the you know and at that time in the 1960s compared to now and the last 20 years um, so much more has been learned about nickel sulfide deposits so silver standard a silver focus company is drilling a nickel sulfide system here when nickel sulfide systems weren't really that well understood at that time and this district was not very well understood because this came before SK Creek, before Bruce Jack, before KSM, before SNP. So uh, there was not uh, a whole lot of really great information that uh, these companies were proceeding on when they were carrying out activity here in the 1960s and then after that, everybody forgets about it for yeah, 50 years. That's right. It's also the um, the very real possibility that they were probably being guided by the observation that quite large intrusions were required to make significant ore deposits. There was probably a subbury model of a of, of the, the very large subbury igneous complex being required to make a significant nickel deposit. And the reality is that so many of the deposits on the planet. Are associated with tiny intrusions, and ENL is no different. Its um, its footprint is exceptionally small, so um, it it just may be that the the whole viewpoint of the controls on nickel mineralization at that time were quite different. Mm -hmm.